I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 186, Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. Released in 1999, this game was developed by Mass Media and published by THQ. So I'd never really been into the Power Rangers show. I vaguely remember watching a few episodes of it at my great grandmother's house when I was super young in the 90s. I'm so unfamiliar with it that I didn't realize there was a TV show by the same name as this game. I know there were several Power Rangers games released throughout the years. The only one I ever played before this was a fighting game on the Sega Genesis. It's hard to tell with licensed games like this. Are you going to get a rare, amazing game, just something okay, or the truly awful? Only one way to find out. Let's get into it. The game has a single player story mode called Titanium Quest, so that's what we'll be doing to beat this game. It opens with Episode 1, Storm on the Horizon. There's some images in like a comic book style showing the story. We're in the underwater lightspeed rescue base. We're told we've got to face our toughest challenge yet, so we've got to go into the virtual training arena. I went into the first mission, Virtual Room 1. It showed my objectives, all it said is shoot. Okay, thanks for the info. So like, all I did was run around shooting some kind of energy out to destroy goop all over the city. Isn't this the plot to Mario Sunshine? Also, what the heck is that run animation? Nobody runs like that. After destroying the final pile of goop, I was congratulated. Yay! Okay, uh, that was strange. Enthusiastic, if anything. Now it was virtual training too, where I used a fire truck. This is some seriously weird stuff. First off, if you touch another car, they are as good as gone. You've got to shoot water on the cars that are on fire to rescue them. In this case, 15 in total. Probably the wildest part of this whole thing though is the fact that you can't stop. It just keeps going infinitely. Maybe we unknowingly got ourselves in some Power Rangers crossover with the movie Speed. After a minute or so, some presumably evil guy flying showed up and was dropping napalm in the streets. This can't be good for the road. Of course, gotta get that yay in when we win. Now into the third virtual training. I was the Megazord fighting some giant green slime. It's really frustrating. It's a first person view, but if you get close, it just automatically swaps to third person briefly. Why? Basically, this is just a button mashing fest. Also, aren't all these rockets that are missing just destroying the city we're trying to protect? Now it's into the real story. Some evil looking guy summons a monster storm. The terrible Typhonus is now attacking the city. Guess this is a job for the light speed rescue team. My objective now is to shoot what appears to be rotten cucumbers and lucha libre competitors. Oh, I've got to shoot the logs? That image did not look like one. One of the later enemies was in a red shield that dropped some kind of power up. I honestly have no clue what it did because the level was over the instant I got it. Oh well. For beating that mission, it said I unlocked a new arena character. Presumably the terrible Typhonus. Oh snap, they are generating a storm in the subway tunnels. Apparently there was a titanium meteorite found there by construction workers. The Green Rangers got this, don't worry. So I ran around like a goofball some more. There's a radar in the bottom left where the white dots are the objectives and the red dots are the bad guys. Yeah, it's pretty useful. Oh, I got a speed boost that let me look even more awkward when running. The bad guys running animation is somehow worse. Dudes are out here acting like they're the villain chasing the gang in a Scooby-Doo chase scene. I found the meteor near some arcade and vending machines that are in the subway for some reason. Somehow, the Green Ranger got captured by Typhonus. We're worried that now the city is going to get flooded. Before we can help the Green Ranger, the Pink Ranger has got to rescue people. So now instead of a fire truck, we're in like an ambulance? There's just so many things wrong with this. We're rescuing the people standing there, but it's fine if I obliterate the other citizens in their cars. I have no idea how that rescue counted. There is just a single red line in the road, yet it seems like there's five or six lanes of width on each side. Also, the people standing there are like two stories tall. None of it makes sense. At least the physics do make sense when I hit this semi-truck. Obviously it would continuously spin and ricochet off that building. Occasionally there are bad guys that I had to shoot with some kind of rings. Ah, <sighs> this game is great. Now we learn that Typhonus left the Green Ranger and is trying to take the meteorite. 
Oh snap, there's a power coin inside. Also, why does the text emphasize the weirdest words? The power coin will help me get the Green Ranger back. It just sounds unnatural. Oh god, now there are tornadoes attacking. This is reminding me of Superman 64. The running around segments are just so open. It's not like there's anything interesting there, so you've got to just run aimlessly for way too long. I'll take this time to talk about the graphics and audio. The graphics are really not good. The game is quite colorful, but it's just a mess. It feels like they implemented PlayStation graphics on the N64 for some reason. At least the game never really lags, though. For audio, well, it's pretty much this. For real though, there's some quite unremarkable music playing during missions. When it shows the story cutscenes and in the main menu it plays the Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue theme with no vocals. Man, there's just so much running around pointlessly in this. Why does this alleyway go all the way back here and just end in a wall? It's not like this is a fun environment to explore. Oh man, I ran into Typhonus in the middle of the city. Actually was quite tanky, but like, where's the threat? Only took like 20 seconds or so and it was done. Also, I saved the Green Ranger. So we get a cutscene about how Typhonus picked up all the other rangers in a big tornado that allowed the Green Ranger to be free. Hey, wait a second. I thought I killed it and freed the green one. Oh well. There's actually some new gameplay in this mission. We're in the Green Ranger's vehicle where we fly around the city. You have a basic gun that is used to shoot all the other bad guy ships floating around. Turning in this thing sure is great. Maybe there's a button to turn faster, but who cares? Still gets the job done all the same. You have to use some kind of tractor beam to rescue all the other rangers. At least this thing is faster than running around. Oh gosh, now that we're done with that, it's time for the ultimate transformation. The Megazord. This is like the only thing I remember from the little Power Rangers I did watch. These fights are the best part of the game, since I guess there has to be a best part. I was taking basically no damage, but I did get knocked down. That's okay though, because I got up again. It was annoying still though, because Typhonus kept shooting some attack that froze me. I got fed up and just sprinted up to him and realized I could melee him. That's what I'm talking about. Punch that tornado to death. We get a rather lengthy cutscene where we learn a gigantic titanium meteor crashed into the ocean long ago. The one we found was just a small piece of it. This evil guy Diabolico is searching the bottom of the ocean for more of those titanium power coins. We've got to put a stop to all that. Riveting story, I tell ya. Now we're on episode 2, Dangerous Tides. Thankfully there are only three of these. Any more and I might have to make this into a two-part video due to all the excitement. Diabolico creates a new villain, Lavica. We learn that Titan City was built around the crater that the meteor landed in. Diabolico is hiding there with Lavica. Well, if you thought the gameplay would change now that we're in a new episode, you'd be wrong. But we do have the Pink Ranger being chased by some guy in a bee costume he bought from Spirit Halloween. They're not alone though. There's also these green guys with their legs tied together. <laughs> Who designed these characters, like really? Well, they did get slightly inventive now. One of the people I needed to rescue was on a balcony. The only way to reach him was climbing the stairs. We're moving in all three axes now. The Blue Ranger had a fire truck mission where he had to survive for four minutes. Why? How does this help us save the city or whatever? They had run out of ideas and it's only episode two. Then for some reason I had to fight the slime monster as the Megazord again. And it just said, cool jets after winning. What the heck does that mean? There's a cutscene where we descend down to Titan City. We learn Diabolico has already found one of the power coins, so that's not good. Oh my god, Lavica himself is here. Man, just looking back at this game, I wonder what it was like to be a dev working on this. Like, you had to know this was not a good game, right? For beating that mission, I unlocked Lavica as a playable character in the arena. That's right, in multiplayer, you can force one of your friends to do the Megazord battles with you. Might not be your friend for long, though. I guess they're ghosts chasing me now? Or more likely some guy in a purple sheet. I had to fight Lavica again for some reason. Maybe he didn't actually die. At least we get a nice yay for our troubles. Yay! We get introduced to the new Titanium Ranger. He thanks us for helping Titan City and says he needs all three power coins to reach full power. Wait, there are only three? They made it sound like there was this giant meteor that had several inside. 
Diabolica is apparently hiding the second one in the ancient ruins, but we've gotta stop Lavica first. You know, for like the third time. Okay, the game had a difficulty spike here. Lavica's punch did like a third of my health. What the heck, man? I couldn't believe it. I was actually losing in this stupid game. I was running for my life when I noticed a supernova behind me. The Megazord was toast. Wait, if they say yay when you win, what do they say when you lose? I don't know exactly what I expected, but that sure wasn't it. I actually didn't know what happens if you lose, and thankfully it saves after every mission. That would be miserable if I had to start over. I won next try, so that loss was a fluke. Apparently Lavica damaged the city's electromagnetic atmosphere producer and all the ruckus. We've got to repair it or their city is going to go pop. It's just one of those fly around as Green Ranger missions, collect 20 boxes. You know the drill by now. Oh jeez, Diabolico used the power coin to create evil Megazord. What a twist! It was another easy Megazord battle. Nothing special. I unlocked Evil Megazord for multiplayer at least. Apparently it was too strong to destroy, and in what I'd describe as a high-tech cutscene for this game, our Megazord is buried under a pile of rubble. The Power Rangers were buried alive. If only we could be so lucky for that to be the end of this story. There's still more. It's Episode 3, Titanic Struggles. The Power Rangers decide to ditch the Megazord and escape on foot somehow. How would they even leave that thing with all the rocks on top? Now we're running around as the Pink Ranger in a very neat cave. This pile of rubble sure is structured well. I only had to rescue the Green Ranger in here too? I guess they didn't feel like putting all of them in. Oh man, apparently while we were digging our way out of that impossible cave, we disturbed a pocket of oil. Dang, now even the Power Rangers are promoting fracking. The Yellow Ranger has to drive over the various tiny oil spills in the street. Somehow it cleans them up. Shouldn't no one be out here driving with what, with that lava monster and the potential rupture of the entire ecosystem? After each mission is beaten, it gives a one screen comic that I've mostly skipped over. But on this one, they put this stupid pun. Slick job, Yellow Ranger. Ugh, give me a break. Now Diabolico is summoning two monsters at once. Why didn't they do that before? Now we're against Lectron and Trembler. Both of them are attacking Titan City. Guess it's time for a light speed rescue. Am I right, guys? Uh, guys? It's a fire truck mission, no different than any of the others. Oh my god, in the twist of the century, the Mirror Megazord is returned. This looks like a job for the Titanium Megazord. Well, I button mashed my way to victory there. At least that's one less foe to deal with. Apparently, it left behind some radioactive goop. We've got to clean it up with Yellow Ranger's vehicle just like the oil from before. I unlocked both Lectron and Trembler for the arena after that mission. So much variety. Oh wow, Trembler has the Titanium Ranger in his grip. The Green Ranger has got this. Aren't these guys supposed to be a team? Do they just take on everything one at a time in the show? It seems inefficient. It's at least a new looking environment to run around now. Kind of gives off Atlantis vibes. Same old enemies though. I ran into Trembler after a while and he was throwing rocks. Electron was there too, but of course, they were both extremely easy to kill. They aren't dead of course though, so now they're using that power coin to grow bigger and bigger. We used the Titanium Ranger's Megazord to do back-to-back -back fights. It actually might have been cool to do both of them at once, but nope, just one at a time back-to-back. -back. They were both easy, then in another high-tech cutscene we can see Trembler running away. Still not over. The Red Ranger ran around the ocean floor for a bit and found the third power coin. It was time to finish this. We see a cutscene where Diabolico uses the power coin they have to merge the two monsters into one. It's the final boss, Electronic Trembler. We're fighting in the Roman Colosseum for some reason. This thing looks like Grimace and Gumby had a child. Of course, there's not anything interesting here. It's just button mashing to eventually kill it. We get a final cutscene showing Diabolico in prison and how they hate the Power Rangers. It then popped up with a message that there is a super secret bonus level by pressing the Z button on level select. We get this amazing image of all the Power Rangers together and it just says, awesome! Guess the Titanium Ranger got left out. And finally the credits play. Ugh, I guess I'll do it. Here's that super secret bonus level. You may be expecting something crazy here, but nope. It doesn't even give any dialogue about what's going on. It's just the Pink Ranger in one of those running around missions. 
There are these big machines moving around that shoot missiles, so I guess that's new. They were pretty tanky and annoying to take out. Oh, I found a better way though. Just run into them and they explode for some reason. Because of course they do. At least we get one final yay out of it. Literally all you get for doing this is an image saying great job. Yeah, great job finally ending this game. That's about all there is for this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue. Yeah, we all just had to sit through that. The best thing the devs did was make this game not long. It's just kind of hilarious seeing this one. So many things I didn't notice during the playthrough that I do while making this video. Like, I'm not expecting to be wowed by the storyline. In the end, Power Rangers is a kid's show. But man, the gameplay is so bad. Like, I guess it functions well for what it is, but it's just boring. The ones where you run around are all full of emptiness and searching for people to save. Even when the bosses show up, it's just nothing. The driving missions are somehow even worse. Surprised I could play this game without falling asleep. The Megazord missions are just button mashing. The only decent one is the flying one, but you rarely get to do it. I am so sorry if you purchased this for full price back in the day. You got ripped off. Also, I don't know what the heck I was thinking at the time, but I initially gave this game a 4 out of 10 for enjoyability. Must have been an off day. Maybe I should go back and adjust the ratings for some of the older games I played through too. I will give it a half a point for yay. I gave Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue a 0.5 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 1 out of 10 for difficulty. Alright, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. We had a randomized marble race to determine which game was next, so here's how that played out. Or skip to the timestamp on screen to skip straight to the game selection. Alright, we'll do a random race. Hop, skip, and jump. 205 games left. Here we are, cruising USA. Could be the winner. Perfect Dark. NFL Blitz. Golden Nugget 64. Let's find out what is next. Three, two, one, go. And they are off. All of the marbles. Absolute chaos for now. Bomberman. Cruising USA, J League, Wheel of Fortune, San Francisco Rush 2 as well. Let's see who comes out first. Who's going to come down the hole? It looks like Cruising USA is coming down, and there it is, followed by the next J League game. Cruising USA coming into the washing machine here now. The J League game in there as well. Paper Mario, Namco Museum, so many games. It's impossible to tell now, folks. Who's going to come out first? Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling is the first to escape. Possibly the best game on the entire list, folks. And... Nobody else yet. Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling all alone. Finally, Paper Mario San Francisco Rush coming through. Conquers Bad Fur Day with a big play there. Tries to go for the shortcut. I don't think they actually achieved something there, but that was an amazing play by Conquers Bad Fur Day. Sheen Nippon Wrestling has gone so many games falling off. Star Fox has gone. NBA Course I 2 is down. Legend of Zelda. Ocarina of Time has apparently taken the lead. I don't see how it happened, but Ocarina of Time... Will this finally be chosen or will we experience heartbreak once again? Brunswick Circuit Pro Bowling is just behind. There's only one obstacle left. Ocarina of Time is coming through. Brunswick Circuit Pro, Pro Bowling not too far behind. Ocarina of Time is trying to get by these pegs. Paper Mario is coming through now as well. San Francisco Rush is coming. Ocarina of Time is in the lead, but here comes the midway. So they're starting it. It's... Oh my god, and in a photo finish. It is Midway's greatest arcade hits. <laughs> Frame perfect, unbelievable. Midway's greatest arcade hits, volume one in the upset. Oh, Ocarina of Time just keeps teasing us. All right, Midway's greatest arcade hits, volume one. It has been decided. Wow. If this is running at 60 FPS, that is two frames before Ocarina of Time. But yeah, if you're still here watching, you're awesome. Thank you so much. If you had a good time, consider hitting that like button or maybe even dropping a subscription. Or hey, maybe even watch another one of these videos that's on screen now. And yeah, see you next time.